Hello, everybody, and welcome to something that I'm not very used to. As you can see, this is my first video. And for this video, I want to attempt to briefly speak about the history of Monster Hunter Online. Please forgive me if I do get any info wrong. Since I've never played the game, it was kind of difficult to find any information, and I mainly use the Monster Hunter Wiki and old reviews of the game. So that being said, please do point out any issues in the comments and I will try to edit and fix it. I am doing this video in the style of another YouTuber by the name of Super Red. He has made a fantastic series on the history of Monster Hunter Frontier and the mainline Monster Hunter games, but he hasn't made one for Monster Hunter Online yet. And after trying to find info about this game, I can see why. <laughs> so with my greatest respect to Super Rad, I will attempt to put my best effort into this. So without further ado, let's get into the history of Monster Hunter Online. Monster Hunter Online is an MMORPG. Some websites state it as an MMOACT, which is basically an MMO action game. Monster Hunter Online is developed by Tencent Games, and it was licensed officially by Capcom themselves. On April 18th, 2013, a new trailer dropped showing a brand new Monster Hunter game. This trailer shows beautiful visuals and it has amazing music and you can even see some familiar monsters such as Rathian and Kongalala. Graphics are something that Monster Hunter Online is prided for due to the engine it was made on called the Cry Engine. After this trailer was released, Capcom later followed this trailer with an official announcement. In June 2013, the game went through a six-month testing period throughout China, and they had no plans for a global launch. Though Crytek implied that there was going to be a global launch, but it was retracted stating that it was very unlikely for it to be released outside of Asia, which us being in 2021, we can easily look that up and know that it hasn't been released. Monster Hunter Online launched August 18th, 2013 with Shocker gameplay that is fairly similar to previous Monster Hunter titles course with some added new features. Being a game released on PC, it obviously came with support for a keyboard and mouse, but that wasn't the best way to play it. Like most Monster Hunter games, it's probably best to be using a controller. The UI of the game is also very different to typical Monster Hunter games. It comes with an MMO style hotbar for both the weapon skills and the items. For example, one hotbar that was shown on screen is one for a charged stab attack for the longsword. Speaking of the longsword, Monster Hunter Online comes with 11 weapons. You have the greatsword, the longsword, sword and shield, the dual blade, Hammer, Hunting Horn, Lance, Gun Lance, Two Bow Guns, and the Bow. The weapons all pretty much play the same as in any other Monster Hunter game, but some have added attacks such as the Longsword gaining a Return Slash after using the Fade Slash. Monster Hunter Online has 
26 different hunting locations, though multiple are used just to fight Elder Dragons, such as the Arid Battlefield where you fight Tartaronis, or the Eternal Volcano where you fight Infernal Tartaronis. Some of the more basic areas are Donwin Valley, which is a natural environment with a variety of plant life, trees, groups of Kelpie, and annoying monsters that hide in the shadows, like this absolute abomination, Seasiber. Another area that is exclusive to Monster Hunter Online is the Thunder Sands. Here you can fight one of my favorite monsters, Tigrex. And looking at pictures of Thunderous Sands, I feel it is actually pretty similar to the Sandy Plains with all of the rocky arches and the massive cliffs. Now in terms of monsters, this is where we start to see some huge numbers. In total, there are 124 monsters in Monster Hunter Online. 22 of these are small monsters, and 102 are large monsters. Of these 124 monsters, there are 68 large monsters that are from previous games. I will only list a couple because there are simply too many to name. Some returning monsters are Diablos, Kushalo Dora, Zenogre, and Rocky Dios. Sadly, there are no returning monsters from the fourth generation of the game, but I'm glad because honestly, who wants to fight Ketchawaka again? Monster Hunter Online also introduced 33 new monsters and many different species of already existing monsters. For example, we have the game's flagship monster, Australian. We also have the Basarios variant, Crystal Basarios, and the lone species, Sandstone Basarios. In typical Monster Hunter fashion, the game featured low and high rank quests, as well as G rank. Though in Monster Hunter Online, G rank is different to other Monster Hunter games. Monster Hunter Online G rank had three different levels, and each level was separated into difficulty levels, one through eight, just like low and high rank quests. The game also has elite quests, which are basically the same as advanced quests from the other titles. Though one weird part is, unlike the main Monster Hunter games, the time limit for the quests was actually 30 minutes compared to the usual 50. And just a side note, before I wrap this up, yes, this was an MMO, so of course players were able to buy skins for their weapons and armor. They were also able to get these skins through the in-game lottery. Now, like I stated earlier, I never actually had the opportunity to play this game due to it not being released in North America. Though there was a way to play it. Luckily, this game did not have an IP block, which means you did not need to have a VPN. What you needed to do was make a QQ account, then download the game, and install it. And with the QQ account that you made earlier, you just needed to log in. Now I may have missed some steps because I've never actually done this. So if you find any problems with that, feel free to correct me in the comments. Sadly, the game has closed down and is discontinued as of December 18th, 2019. Which is honestly a shame, because I and many others would love to play this game. And that's why I made this video, 
to keep the memory of Monster Hunter Online alive. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I know it may not be the best, may not have the best information, but I am getting started. And I would appreciate if you subscribed, because I will be doing more brief histories of other games. So again, thank you for watching.